Come on, put your hands together and praise the Lord. Come on, be worthy of our praise. The Lord is at this moment. Yes, amen. You see, in that 14th chapter of these 
parables he's teaching. He's talking about the parables of great death. He's talking about the cost of discipleship. And he even gets around to talking about salt, 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 salt that is needed and necessary. And sometimes maybe some of us do. We, we might shake that salt shaker yes. longer than we need to. Yeah. Mm. Somebody ought to say ouch. ouch. <laughs> and then he's talking about, he's talking about, he's giving the parable of the lost sheep. And what happened with them as they wandered away. But then it came to, into my spirit to, to and, and not just this Sunday, but this is a two-part. This is a two-part. Because first of all, we're going to look at that brother. Mm -hmm. that, that, that brother. <laughs> the man had how many sons? Two sons. Two sons. Mm -hmm. And who was the younger one? Mm -hmm. the, the, the younger one. Mm -hmm. The younger one. How many younger ones are in the house here? How many younger ones? <laughs> look, look, you know <laughs> But the, 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 the Luke is trying to tell us about this parable of the prodigal son. You know, the oldest brother was the one who inherits stuff from there. He died. And, 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 and then how many boys? Two. There are two of them. And the way things normally would happen was that the oldest brother would be the one who was in charge of everything and he continued to live past that. Uh-huh. Am I saying that right? Y'all you shaking your head so you're all with me. Anybody not like you're trying to see y'all snap on the side of the head. But here is this brother who's sick and tired of what his big brother is doing. And he goes to daddy and he says to daddy, I need my property now. I am sick and tired of the pigs. I'm sick and tired of pulling this crop up and down. I, 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 I'm just I, I, I ain't with this daddy. Amen. I need the throne. And so the scripture tells us that daddy gave the boy his portion of the inheritance. Boyfriend, he is so glad. And he goes off to a far away country. He is drinking, he is eating, he is buying people off. <laughs> Taking everything he got. <laughs> and he don't want to keep on spending. There comes a time if you keep on spending. If you keep on spending and nothing is coming in, mm -hmm. after a while, you are in poverty. Mm -hmm. And many times, when things like that begin to happen, all the friends, all the drinking buddies, eating buddies, nice clothes, folk. <laughs> Again and again. People lost 
that time. <laughs> it really had. <laughs> but stuff like that is not new. We see this old stuff. So the boy, after he goes through all this that is happening, he finds himself in the field with the pigs. He found them. Come on, y'all. Can you take the lot? You, you, you so hungry, so messed up that you eat that slop. I told y'all sometimes when I was younger, my parents sent me down to Southern South Carolina when I was a young, young boy. And them pigs, they were, I, I mean, you had to take that stuff, that slop, and pour it in that little. Yeah, see, somebody know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and it was stanky. Yeah. But that's how it was. And this brother was down to that point in his life. And then he says in that 17th verse, he says, oh. he said, how many of my fathers Yeah, man, it's 
serious. Mm -hmm. But the story don't end that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my brother, so we're gonna take care of that next week. Next time, we're gonna take care of the other brother. But where are you? What are you doing? What does God bless you with? As we come into the new year. Are you still holding on to some stuff you should have let go? Are you still holding on to some hope you maybe needed to let go? Are you doing what God has called and already equipped you to do? I am ready for that day. I am born there now. I'm having too much fun. There are a whole lot of them. Boys out there and women out there. When God has reached out to you, when God has blessed you in awesome, awesome ways, when I hear about people who think it's not robbery at the time because they know the Lord and they know the Lord blesses. You know, it's kind of hard sometimes to get your blessings if you don't stop everything up. And ain't willing to let him go. I remember growing up and I was paper, I, I did papers, I did newspapers, stuff like that. And probably in back it was then. Another name now. But some years ago I met this young lady and she was a waitress at one of those good food places. <laughs> and a friend of her had asked her to go with her to the Brockton Bank that was downtown near City Hall. That's been some years now. A friend asked her to drive her to take her to the bank. The one who was going for the job wanted someone who was willing to take her in her car to the bank. And then asked if she could wait to go and put her resume and everything in, and then she could go back to the restaurant to get her. Somebody in the bank said to the girl, why don't you fill out an application too? She still did not. The girl who she brought to the bank didn't get the job. The one who was good enough to help somebody out later became one of the presidents. Problem, right? mm -hmm. I knew her way back when, when she was coming down from Turner Station with young people when they would come down to West River Camp where I was a lifeguard down there for a while. Mm -hmm. I ended up being at St. Matthews in Turner Station where that young lady lives. And for her to go through those different levels, she wasn't trained initially to be able to do all that. But she always said, God was with me. Mm. God was the one who made things happen. And my brothers and sisters, as we think about this new year, as we think about this new year that we're in now, what are we holding on to that we need to let go, that God is trying to help us let it go? Because maybe somebody else can benefit. Somebody else can utilize something we have. And sometimes, it's just sometimes take a little time. Maybe have a prayer with somebody. When you see somebody, they ain't looking too good. They don't always have to be family members. It could be someone while you're standing in the line, looking for the line to move a little closer.
You've been out there pretending and thinking that other folk are going to be there and you're going to be the top dog. But here it is, my brothers and sisters. What can happen, what does happen, especially if we claim to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And focus says something about that. But see, I have to say, I have to name it like it should be named. It's not about membership, it's about discipleship. Doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, but when you get to know Jesus for yourself, when you get to know Jesus for yourself, then certain things begin to happen, even to a young person. Even to a young person when, for some reason, the Holy Spirit is touched them. The Holy Spirit is leading, leading them, leading them, leading them so that they can have a fruitful, productive life. And so all we need to do, my brothers and sisters, let go of that other stuff. Let go of that other stuff that is not really doing us any good. This year, as we enter this year, as we enter this time, as we enter this moment, and so many things are changing up, so many things are becoming different. But you have to make a decision. Yeah. Younger brother.